You're listening to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast, celebrating hunting dog heritage, competition, and community. United Kennel Club has been the hunting dog sports home for coonhounds, beagles, retrievers, pointers, cur feist, and more for over 125 years. Hey everybody, welcome to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast. My name is Todd Kellum, and I am joined today by UKC Program Director Dominic Moyle, who's joining us remote. How are you doing out there? Uh, I'm all right, but I'm kind of drowning in the yellow snow we've got going on down here in North Carolina now. Yeah, you said that earlier this morning, talking about yellow pollen in the air. I have just the opposite problem up here in Michigan. It's white and it's frozen. <laughs> what we're dealing with. <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty bad. I walked out one morning, my entire truck, which is usually blue, had turned like to a complete shade of green. And it was one of those you couldn't see out the windshield. It, it's it's gnarly out here right now. And it's not even real spring because we had a nice little warm snap there for about four days. And then this morning, I think it was like 30. Yeah. Neither situation is good for running dogs, is it? No. And we've been teased because we've had some really nice weekends for being up here in, in the upper Midwest. You know, the ground's been thawed and we're able to get the dogs out. I've been shed hunting my little cocker pup a little bit. And then now you get into mid-March and we got, I don't know, a few inches of snow and it's frozen. We are going to talk about all things Shed Dog Nationals. And I'm pretty excited to go over this one with you. But we have both some history to discuss and we'll talk about our upcoming Shed Dog Nationals and maybe what people can look forward to or give them a little information on that. Let's start out with some history then. I was going back through my notes, and it's a good refresher for for me too. But uh, for our, some of our new listeners, maybe, or some of our listeners from other sports that might be joining us today, our first Shed Dog event, Elite Shed Dog Series UKC event, was held in May of 2017, and that was in Delton, Michigan, not too far from where I live now. I didn't live there at the time, but uh, so 2017 was our our first shed dog full year. And then in 2018, that started that we kicked off our uh, Bone Clone Dog of the Year Awards year with the 2018 events. So that ran through the year, takes us up to 2019, when we had our first shed dog national. So that first shed dog nationals also included um, the awards program for the 2018 Dog of the Year Awards. And I kind of wanted to go over all of our national champions at this point, give them some little bit of recognition. That first year in 2019, our national champion winner was national champion Shed Dog, grand champion Shed Dog 2, Scuba Steve from Foxy Ranny. Yeah. Owned by Jason Reason. So congratulations, Jason. The thing I remember the most, the thing I remember the most about that year was not only did Jason come in there and win the national championship with Steve, but he was also recognized for his dog ESD Antler Ridge Ransom, who was our dog of the year. Hmm. So he comes to to Kentucky to pick up dog of the year and national champion. That's that's a high mark. <laughs> Just kind of wiping the floor with him. You know, that national yeah, that was... champion, he's now a two-time grand na- or grand champion shed dog. Yeah. And he's back to uh, to defend his title or to shoot for another national title this year. I saw he's in the entries, so yep. good luck to Jason and Scuba Steve. And he's got a new dog, too. I don't, I don't know the name of his new dog, but well, it'll be fun to see, fun to see Jason there. And I think that first Nationals, um, I think that was about 50 entries, 55 maybe. Mm -hmm. So that was 2019. 2020 was a COVID year and it was disappointing, but we did cancel the National Championship in 2020. So 2021, your National Champion was National Champion Shed Dog, Elite Shed Dog 3, Black Ices, Indian Princess Hall of Fame. And congratulations to Zoe and Jeff Rada. 
Or Do you Cruz remember who is Jeff. running him at that national? Was it Zoe or was it Jeff? Her. Her. Yeah. Yeah, so I would say Cree is definitely Zoe's baby. She ran her. And uh, it was fun. I did, a, I did a nice interview with Zoe after the event. You know, that dog had just, she won everything up to that point. Had won a lot, say that. You know, youth, Zoe had won Youth of the Year with her. And, ah, just a huge name in the sport. I was so happy for Zoe and Jeff. And, and then again, Cree is coming back this year. She's, she's back in the entry mix this year. So, you know, got another couple of years of age on her, but doing good by all reports. Yeah, from what I hear. That's a very so, experienced team. In the Zoe oh, yeah. Thing. And Zoe's a good representation of, of the youth program, too. That's kind of been in, in effect for a number of years now. You know, grooming those those uh, younger handlers into, you know, somebody capable of handling a dog to a national champion title. I mean, that's, that's pretty awesome. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what a role model. For Next, sure. we got to get her on the judging team. <laughs> love to have her love to have her and Jeff come out and judge one of our nationals coming in the future so we'll see about that we're going to give her a break this year though let her run her dog again yeah that brings us up to 2022 and this is a this one's a little bit tough to talk about so in 2022 last year your national champion is or was national champion shed dog elite shed dog 3 Soggy Acres, Augustus Meadows, Hall of Fame. So that dog, call name is Gus, and he's owned by the Travis Meadows family. And unfortunately, some sad news to report there, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I still keep hoping that I'll see a Facebook post or, you know, hear some good news at National about him. I was just going to fill anyone in who might not know he uh, he got out recently, so they're still, still on the search for him. Yeah. Gus is MIA, but, um, you know, every day we still hope that he's going to show up. But this is a great chance for us to reach our wider UKC audience across the dog sports, right? Our coonhound family and hunting retriever people. Uh, Gus is a, a young um, chocolate lab male. I think he's going to turn four in April. So mm -hmm. if you see uh, there's a new chocolate lab male in your area that's a very talented dog, and maybe you're not sure of some of the history. You can contact either Dominic or I at United Kennel Club, and we'd be glad to put you in touch with the Meadows family. I'm sure they'd love to hear from us. I know there's a no questions reward out for the safe return of Gus. Yep. And we're all hoping and praying that's exactly what happens. And he did go uh, go missing out of Normantown, West Virginia. So, again, if anyone's tuning in from that area and they happen to come across him, yeah. Hopefully, hopefully that little plug will yep. help get us some info. Yeah. Uh so with that, let's talk about the national championship locations. Uh that 2019, our first national, that was held at Real McCoy Outdoors, which is in West Union, Ohio, right down on the Kentucky line. And that was that was a cool place for our event. Um it it fit the bill to having courses close together like we do now at Wren Lake. However, there the working courses were up on one up on top of the hill and champion courses were down a pretty long, pretty long drive, driveway through the woods to a lower area where all of our champion courses were. And it wasn't like you could walk between champions and working. But other than that, it was a really a cool setting. Everybody, they had a lot of um, accommodations where people could stay on the grounds. So it gave it that group feel because everybody was staying on site, which I really like. Uh, so that was, yeah, that was our first location down in, it was, it was good. It was a good event. After COVID, though, we started looking around some more. And I had been to the Wren Lake area for several other types of events, hunting retriever and pointing dog. I just always liked that Ren Lake area. You got everything on site, lodging, restaurants, 
It's a short drive to the Rend Lake Rec area. So we decided in 2021 to put the Shed Dog Nationals at Rend Lake and they've had a good run, 21, 22, and then this year we're coming back. So I'm excited yeah. about it. What did you think? You, you saw it for the first time last year. You know, it. if you drew up what the perfect scenario would be to host an event like this, I mean, that that's it. You got that nice central little office area for check-ins and for handler meetings. And then, you know, you could about throw a rock and hit every one of the forces from there. And everything, it's not so close that it feels crowded, but it's close enough that, you know, if you're running five dogs behind on a different course because you're bringing multiple, then you're able to get off of that course, go put your dog up in the car, grab the next one and be in the holding blind and not really hold things up at all. Yeah, that's exactly right. And, you know, that first year when we had 50 entries in um, Ohio, you didn't, you know, people, it was, the sport was new. Um, people weren't coming in running six dogs at that point most of them. So having the courses split as far apart as they were, wasn't that much of a problem it, I think it would be today. Mm -hmm. And the truth is we've got some really nice options for other courses at Rend Lake, which are, I don't know, just a, a chip shot away, but you would have to get in a vehicle to move. So up to this point, we really haven't utilized those, but we've got We've got more options to run at Wren Lake if we ever feel like we need need to look at those. Yeah, and it's also nice about the the whole topography, the whole topography of that area too, because it gives you the options to have multiple field courses, multiple wooded courses. It's not like everything's in the woods or everything's in a field, or you know, even the field courses they they almost look like you pulled them out of two completely different farms. So. Uh, that's something yeah. I like about it. Yeah. If I, if I had one wish list item, it would be for a little bit bigger headquarters building. Man, if we had that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Well, we'll have to talk to the – get on the phone with the state of Illinois and see what you can do. <laughs> so, yeah, talking about the facility down there, Ted Leifer is the head of the Ren Lake staff, and they have been so good for us to work with. Um, just a couple of reminders for people that'll be traveling to the nationals this year. Uh, shed hunting is regulated in that state park. I know that. I, I know that most of the park, you cannot wild shed hunt. Uh, there is an area connected to the park. I think it's on the south end. Don't take my word for that. My point is, um, Get with the Rend Lake team down there, the, the state park um, employees, and find out where to shed hunt if that's on your list of things to do. And just be forewarned that you cannot shed hunt right there around where the actual event is being held. Just a quick reminder. And also, um, gosh, they've been so good to us, and we want to come back. Let's, let's do what we can to keep our trucks off of the grass. Um, take care of the area, pick up after your dogs. All those little things that, uh, you know, those of us that go to dog events need to be aware of if we want to go back, right? Yeah. That's another nice thing about that location is there's plenty of parking. Yeah, it's a good setup. So we're looking forward, looking forward to coming back. Well, let's talk about, let's go over a little bit of the um, reminders we have for everybody. Or introduce, we got a few new things to introduce. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, we can talk about our staff, staffing that's going down to represent United Kennel Club. Uh, we've got Nicole, who most everybody met last year, and Dominic and myself. Oh, and Keegan, he's coming with us. Keegan was there two years ago, I believe. So people will remember, remember Keegan and uh, Morgan is new with us this year. So for all those clubs and individuals that have dealt with Morgan to get your event scheduled and reports processed, you're going to get a chance to, to meet her. Yeah. What do you think? Pretty qualified team? Uh, definitely. 
And uh, has Megan been to the Shed Dog Nationals before? You know, I don't know if Megan has. She's She will be there as well. She is on Nicole's uh, major event team. Mm -hmm. And uh, all there, it's going to look, having Nicole and Megan both there, this, this event is going to look great. Yeah. So I'm always astonished. I think everybody's, everybody's in for a treat. Oh, yeah. Yeah, hard workers. And it, it's really stepped up our events a lot, our mm -hmm. major events. Having them, so yeah, that uh, that's the UKC staff that'll be there. Let us know if you, if anybody in attendance needs anything, we'll be glad to help you out. Uh, the entry, you want to talk about the entry numbers? I guess we can announce that. Yeah, yeah. So the official last count that I saw was, and let me be a hundred percent certain here, but the last number that I saw was 178 is what the last number I saw. So entries are now closed. That's your your class for the 2023 Shed Dog Nationals. Oh, 148. You're right. I didn't want to I didn't think we picked up 30 dogs overnight, but <laughs> yeah, 148. So I'm happy with that number. Um you know, and uh the champion class and the working and youth classes are almost exactly evenly split. So you're going to be looking at 25 dogs per course. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a very, very workable number. We should be able to put on a quality event. It's still the largest shed dog event ever because it was, it's one dog bigger than last year. <laughs> so, um, no, I think, I think that's, I'm, I'm happy with that. Uh, and just to just to point out to people too that this is an advanced entry only event. So someone hearing this on the podcast uh, couldn't load up and come down and, and get a dog in there. But it's, and the reason for that is there's just so much planning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of logistics that you're go going, into you're it. You're going through that right now. Yep, yep. I'm I'm working on making sure running orders are all randomized and, you know, no one's running the same course twice in, in a day. And yeah, so there's, there's definitely a lot that go into it. Uh, and speaking about the logistics of it too, and dogs not running twice per day, that's, that's a n new change for this year, right? I don't want to skip too far ahead, but uh, that's something I'm kind of excited to see how it works. Oh, I, th I think that, uh, you know, last year, that's what prompted this, this change was, you know, when you're trying to run, e each judge is needing to judge 50 plus dogs uh, on Saturday. Man, it is a long day. Mm -hmm. It's hard on your judges. You know, it's, it puts, I've never been to a banquet on time, but I can say that. You know, if you're out there getting everything wrapped up at the end of the day, huh, you know, it's crowded and dark before you can even get out of there. So, yeah, this year we're going to be running one round a day and running three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, one round per day. So that is going to be some breathing room. Oh, yeah. For sure. You know, I think uh, I think somebody else mentioned, you know, there's a – they're looking forward to uh, the chance to have their dogs through their flight and then head home, have a shower, and then grab lunch. That's, you know, there's there's a high likelihood of, of us finishing, you know, a good bit into, you know, just after afternoon. It's uh yeah, well, see how it goes, but you know what? It gives us it gives us a chance to take a lunch break, mm -hmm. um, which is something else that we talked about. We're not gonna. We're not going to try to schedule lunches there, but if we could shut, you know, two courses down for different time slots, um, give your judge and your shed planners a little bit of a break. Yeah, uh, it's going to be. It's it's the biggest change we got this year, I think. So I'm super happy about that. I wanted to go back though and talk about um, the qualification process. So in addition to this being an advanced entry only event. Um, there is a qualification process as we as we move forward and say the elite shed dog series picks up a second major event that's that's um 
hosted by UKC, such as in, in coonhounds or beagles, I would relate it to our world championship event. Maybe the Nationals won't be a qualifying pro- have a qualifying process down the road, but for right now it does, and there's two reasons for that. One is um, by requiring dogs to earn passes. I think working is two pass requirement and champions is four. Mm-hmm. By re- having those requirements, the handlers, the handlers come into the Nationals with a good understanding of how an event works, what the rules are. So it's not like someone's coming to their very first event and it'd be the Nationals and they don't know the how it works. And number two, that's always kind of been important to me, is that it, it uh, requires people to get out and support our clubs at the weekend events. And that's a, that's a big part of the health of the program, right? Mm-hmm. We need to support those weekend, need to support the weekends. The, those clubs are... You know, like you said, that's what keeps the sport going. You know, they, they give so much opportunity in certain areas for, for people to attend these shed hunts almost, you know, any given weekend in some of the regions. So being able to push these people that, that you know, they have fantastic dogs and make sure that they, they promote and support those local clubs, even the smaller ones, is definitely um, a big piece of what keeps the, the shed dog community going. Yeah. So that's that's why I like the qualification process, those two points. Uh, to let people know, at the national championship, we do award uh, championship points for all dogs that can – you have to complete all three courses. You have to pass all three courses. Uh, and then we do award championship points. It is not a dog of the year points event, right? And that's that's because of the skewed entry size. Mostly. Plus, it's the, it's the, you know, that's where we do the dog, the elite award, um, the elite award presentation. So, you know, the the year end cuts off prior to the nationals and picks up the weekend after. Plus, you know, at a weekend event or you know events that people are attending for those dog of the year points, that's that's one of the biggest pulls to to end up in the podium is is to. Uh, you know, perform well. Well, at the national, if you end up on the podium, you're you're going home with some prizes, and you know, if you get that first place champion, you're you're going home with a new title that that's shared by what three other dogs. So, uh, you know, there's a lot more in it right. than just the points. Yep. Well, why don't you walk us through the check-in process? Yeah. So uh, we'll have a Thursday check-in as well as a Friday morning, but. You know, Thursday is going to give you a lot more breathing room if you're able to make it down. That uh, that check-in time window is from 4 to 6. And so you'll just be coming in, making sure that we have you on the roster. We know you're going to be there. Um, you end up getting like a a little something from Yukonuba. I'm not sure exactly what they do, but they usually do something for our participants. Um, you know, it, and it gives you a good chance to socialize. You know, some people might be out there, you know, talking and, you know, doing little little stuff with their dogs and just it, it's like a family reunion i think that's how you always describe it is you know the national is like this big reunion in the sport uh, but there will be a it secondary seems to work out that way for our yeah it seems to work out that way for all the rest of our events too the nationals are are big and you know it's a family reunion type atmosphere sometimes mm-hmm. the world championships they're smaller the qualification process is more strict People get a little more focused. I don't know. I I just like the environment of the national. Yeah. Uh, there will be a secondary check-in time at seven on Friday morning, but um, you know, it, it's definitely yeah. a little bit more beneficial to to make it there Thursday if you're able, um, because along with that that window for check-in, you know, the running starts at eight, but the uh, there will also something new for this year is going to be a uh, uh, bitch check. We're going to be checking females for um, signs of heat or season. So that'll be going from 7 to 7.30. If you're waiting to get there to the last minute to check in, you might be going straight from check-in to have your female checked by you know, either a judge or some UKC officials. Yeah, good point. So let's, yeah, so you touched on that. Um... 
pitch check will be each morning too. It's not just a one shot. So the handlers meeting will be Friday morning only. Mm -hmm. We'll get everybody together at eight o'clock, go over some event particulars. But uh, pitch check is each morning for those people yep. running females. Yep. That's new this year, but that's another good, it's another good change. That's uh you know, that was a topic that was talked about a little bit last year, and it was uh, obviously it's another thing that they do at our hunting retriever um, spring and fall grand. And you're talking about what nine hundred dogs there, and they I can think they successfully do a bitch check every day. Yep. Yeah, and you can successfully do a bitch check every day with that kind of dogs. We can do one. We can do one in our in this sport. Yeah. Just. All the efforts to preserve fairness and, and uh, equal opportunity for, for the participants to make sure that whether you're running the, the first dog of the day or you're running after a female, you're going to get the same same opportunity that anyone else running at course will. Alan, we both had Daltra Pathfinder 2s now for a little while. What do you think about yours? I'm liking mine. One of the things I had the opportunity to now download a map of an area where I did not have service, and I've used it there, and it has worked flawlessly. I love it. Yeah, I love the crystal clear maps. I love that I never lose reception on my dog's collars anymore. Highly recommended by me as well. Dog Trip Pathfinder 2, the official GPS collar of UKC. So, yeah, we talked about the three-day um, format being new, but the way we determine winners is not new, okay? But for those that aren't maybe familiar, familiar with it, uh, it's three runs combined time is how the Nationals works. You run a different course each day, and uh, we record your time, add them up, and the lowest time wins. Now, another thing that's unique is that or any dog that times out, they are assigned a point value or a time value of 2230, 22 minutes and 30 seconds. And basically what that is, that's a full, it's a full run, 15 minutes plus a half run penalty. Because technically those dogs would, I don't think we'll ever see it where that dog's in contention, but you never know, right? So that's how we account for the time on those dogs. Plus, it makes sure that no one comes there on a Friday, runs their dog, and then has to turn around and go straight home. It gives them the chance to keep running that whole weekend. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Gain the experience and have fun at the have fun at the. Mm -hmm. Uh, next on my list is uh, let's talk about prize packages a little bit, and I one of the reasons I want to talk about this is, uh, we this event is unique. And any other event that UKC does. And I love this about it. So we take our prizes that have been donated or, or purchased by UKC, break them out into eight, and try to be as equal as we can on the values. But as opposed to me saying first place wins a dog box, and you don't need a dog box, uh, if you're the per first place dog, you get to pick which prize package mm -hmm. you like. I love that. Yeah. So. And the thing is, and we will have those prize packages all laid out and they'll be in the banquet, on the banquet tables, I think. They'll be at the headquarters building. So most, most of those prizes are displayed. Uh, if you are in contention, be looking that list over so that it will save us time um, getting everything processed on Sunday afternoon. So we'll bring, the, we'll bring those winners in there, first through fourth champion. And then first through fourth working. If they're anything like me, you know, whether or not you're going there knowing you have a dog that's, you know, consistently putting up sub two minute times or you have a dog that's running 10 minute times, you're going to go in there and go, if I won, this is the one I'd want. And so <laughs> <laughs> even if you go in there and you look at those prize packages and, you know, you, you, you kind of get a feel for which one you would prefer. Exactly. Uh, and while we're on that topic, I'm going to jump ahead here too. One of the things that we that we could improve upon last year, and we did, we're going to this year, is all those winners are going to report report immediately to a photo area. 
and Keegan is going to get their win photo. Um, it's something that we just got busy on last year, and it wasn't as organized as it should have been. So mm -hmm. for those of you that are lucky enough to make the podium at the Nationals, um, Sunday afternoon, we are going to be um, get you your prize package, and right away we need to get win photos. Yep. And uh, from what I understand, too, we might be bringing some of this equipment that they're hearing us on right now. You know, we might might have some podcast interviews to do while we're there as well. So, you know, that's something to look out for yeah, in the near I had, future. Make sure you subscribe. Yeah, yeah, I definitely had that on my list as well. So a third thing that's going to be going on, right? You got the prizes, mm -hmm. you got win photos, and you're going to be doing podcast coverage with the winners, recording for a future episode. And mm -hmm. throughout the weekend... Two, I'll be sitting down to talk to uh, different people that are just there to talk to them about um, how their events go, and you'll be doing the same thing, I'm sure. So, yeah, we want to get yeah. get as many or get you know many of our customers on the podcast as we can that weekend. I think it'd be fun. For sure. I mean, you're going to have everyone there already, and you know, it just it makes sense to take advantage of that opportunity. We can't have a lot of these people come into the studio to record with us, or you know. We, yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it. I just wish we had a better area to to do the podcast from. Like that built, like I said, that building is so small. It would just be cool if we had a. But we maybe maybe we'll get blessed with nice weather and we can sit out sit outside and talk. Who knows? Yeah, fingers crossed. Keep your fingers crossed. All right, let's talk about something else new this year, and that is the location of the banquet. The awards banquet is on Saturday evening at seven o'clock. Tickets mm -hmm. are twenty dollars in advance. Um, and just a note on that: we had a question this week come up about young children. I know really young children are not required to have a ticket, but they, but Nicole did want a head count on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. want to make sure we have chairs and and all of that for them. Uh, so the new thing about the banquet is its location. It is. We're not going to be at the golf course for the banquet. Now, I have been, I was there, I don't know, a couple months ago on our way down uh, to a Beagle event, actually. But it's a cool setting. I really like the setting for this year's banquet. It's, and it's no further away. So right there at that intersection where the hotel and the gas station is, um, you go south, and it's maybe two miles down there. And it's a nice little banquet facility. It's back in, oh, it's back in the woods. It's kind of a rustic looking building. It's it's perfect for what we do. Yeah. So that's a change. And the raffle items will all be moved over there. Yeah, the raffle will be going live auction. Um, the Elite Awards presentation from for last year's winners. There will be a bartender. Um, so, yeah, it should be a good time. So spectators are welcome at this event. Uh, for any first time, first time person coming, there will each of the courses you will see some flagging that indicates a spectator area. In other words, we, spectators can only come so close to the course, right? But there's a there's a location marked out for spectators, and. Also, we don't want any of the participants spectating until after they've run that course. And I'll also take it a step further, too, and say no recording, no video recording from that spectator area either. Um, you know, we, we want to make sure things stay fair for everybody. And you know, the, the idea of it being in malice to record is, is, you know, far from, you know, the forefront of my mind. But you would hate for something to hey check out uh check out Fido on this one run and somebody look at it and go I just watched him find five of those antlers and I know exactly where they are on the course I mean even perspective might change things a little bit but you know the whole the whole idea of fairness comes in a little bit so you know watch it but don't accidentally spread yeah. any information about plants. No, yeah, that's right. So, yeah, we've got to be careful, but we do want this sport to be approachable. We want new people to see it. Um, mm -hmm. 
So yeah, if anybody's listening to this and hasn't hasn't been to a shed dog event, come on out. We, you'll be able to see see some really nice dogs run some on each of these courses. So a few notes there about spectators. Uh, food. <clears throat> that question came up this week. Uh, man, that has been a that has been an issue over the years. <laughs> every the every year we've had one of these food trucks lined up. They've canceled on us like a week before the event. Last year, you and I went into town and found one, though, didn't we? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We were just in town, and what was it? It was a fish fry truck, and then we asked him, and it turns out his son had a smash burger truck, and you know, the rest is history. <laughs> yeah. So this year, we do have Dave's Barbecue and Smokehouse that will be set up on the grounds Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That answers that question. Man, it, you gotta gotta admit it's pretty convenient. You know, the the running grounds itself is not close to fast food, so it's pretty nice to have food on the grounds. Mm hmm. It, it makes it easy for the participants too, because you know they could they might have multiple dogs and they have a you know a window of time, but they don't want to miss their their opportunity to get in the holding barn. They could run over, grab something to eat, and you know never leave the ground. Uh, one other thing that's new, a little bit different, not it's not a big thing, but courses this year will be numbered as opposed to um, sponsored by a company. So you're going to see we've got these gigantic flags with numbers one through six on them. That's how we're going to refer to courses is they're going to be numbered. So the running order that you're putting together, Dominic, that will that will tell people how they rotate through their course, right? Yep. Yep. It'll be pretty simple. You'll have champion and then you're working youth. And so you'll look at your champion, figure out where you are on each course if you've got multiple dogs and just plan accordingly. Yep. Uh we we put a lot of effort into making sure that the running order is completely random. And so with that, if you are bringing multiple dogs, there may be a chance that you have a tight window. If for some reason there's a backup and you don't make your time at that next course, our standard procedure is that you would just drop three in the running order. Well, that's about all I've got. Do you have any anything else on your list, Dominic, that we haven't touched on yet? I mean, when we talked about growth, the the growth of the sport in general, I'm trying to do a big deep dive into the sport from our our side of things and it's pretty cool to see that the number of entries in in these shed dog events on average since the very beginning is almost 200 percent a year so the sport yeah. is absolutely booming um one of the coolest things this past year is that we've had shed dog clubs pop up in like the most obscure locations that I would not have thought the next club was going to come from. I thought the next club would kind of branch out from our existing core of, uh, of clubs, but you now we've had things pop up in was it Oregon, California? Um, I think we saw an Arizona one, Florida, New Jersey. I mean, they're instead of them slowly growing from the nucleus. Now you're seeing like these little outliers pop up, which kind of excites me because I feel like that'll really spring the growth forward. having. You know, this one club be the only club in a certain state. Somebody else is going to go, hey, I had to drive six hours to this thing. I love it. I want to start my own club. And so it'll continue to to um, spread from there. And uh, that's, you know, that's one of the coolest things to me about the sport is how, how young it is and how fast it's growing. Um, there's always growing pains. But the fact that it's growing at the rate that it is says that something's something's right about it. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I agree with all that. And um, that's why the Nationals are important. It's the showcase event, you know, for this program. So our UKC staff will be there doing everything we can to put on a, a good show for everybody. I'm looking forward to seeing this year, especially moving to the three-day format. I think a lot of things will change. The The overall feel of it will probably be a little bit more laid back, and nobody's going to feel like they're rushing around like ants and trying to get to the next place. All right. Well, good. We hope to have this uh, po this episode air um, just prior to the Nationals. So all everybody that's traveling will be able to have something to listen to about the Shed Dog Nationals on their way to Ren Lake. 
We look forward to seeing everyone there. Thanks for listening to the UKC Hunting Ops Podcast. Be sure to give us a follow wherever you get your podcasts so you don't miss out on new episodes.